Hi everybody, this is Gary Dean with Sentiment Timing, and this is actually our premium report. Um, we're, we're having, I don't know what's going on, but uh, the, we're, we're not able to upload our reports. So uh, instead of sitting there waiting for our developer to uh, to fix it, I figured I would I would put this in a video, but I'm also going to send it out in a PDF. I'm just not sure if you're going to be able to open it. So I know that I'll be able to send this out where you'll be able to uh, to to be able to at least listen to it. Hopefully the PDF will work. So uh, let's get started here. Um, so the D indexes are starting to break ranks. And what I mean by that is the NASDAQ, which really had like six stocks that were leading the way. Um, it, it, it's, it, they're now lagging, meaning that the, uh, to just today, the NASDAQ is down some 150 points and the Dow, which was underperforming is now up something like 275. So we're seeing the indexes kind of break rank. And, and that's something that, um, I, I've said is a, you know, it, it is a topping pattern or it's a bottoming pattern, meaning that. If, uh, you know, not all the indexes are going down at once and one's trying to break rank, uh, it, it just means that it, it, think of it as a as a chain, an oil chain. And if a link breaks off of it, that chain is going to stop at some time. It doesn't mean that it has to stop. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think that's a good scenario. <laughs> Let's just say pistons in an en engine, uh, you know, where if one goes, it, it doesn't mean that the car has to stop right there. But the ones that are leading the way, which would be the Dow, have to really uh, pull the other indexes up. So that is um, one of the things that, you know, that I'm looking at for today. Um, I'm not sure what what the catalyst is going uh, to be to throw reality into the bulls. And what I mean by that is, I mean, there, there's so many out there that, you know, the, the fact that they're you know, really just uh, skipping through the graveyard uh, with, with zero fears whatsoever when, you know, the, they are fighting the Fed. No matter how you look at this and, and you, you slice and dice it, the Fed does not want the market up because that will cause a, uh, it, uh, what's the, I forget the name of it. Um, it, it, it people are going to start looking at their portfolios uh, or their 401ks and and saying okay great i have i have money back into my account i can spend it and when once they start spending you know e e inflation's going to start rising again and and that is uh you know it, it's something that I, I don't think a lot of people are are really grasping right now that you know they they're fighting the fed this the fed does not want this stock market, uh, you know, starting a new bull market because it will absolutely crush their their, you know, chances of, of containing inflation. And as I said, the core inflation is still very high, and that's the part that is concern is concerning them. So that's one. Um, uh, you know, another is inflation does start to uh, to, to head higher again because of the endless spending by this administration. Um, the the latest one is the student loan forgiveness. Um, they're saying it's going to be somewhere around 40 billion, but now as people are peeling it back, it's getting cl very closer to one trillion. So this is not Congress did not pass this. This is not legal. The judges, uh, Supreme Court said it wasn't legal, but yet you know here we go. They're you know they're doing. They don't really care. We have to run by their you know their rules, and that's it. So again, that is that going to pop up inflation? Absolutely, because now you have these kids that aren't going to have to pay off these loans anymore. And where's it going to go? I mean, if you think about the the, the people that are getting forgiven on this, it's probably going to be going to rent and bars and stuff like that. So it's not really going to bring our economy up like they're, they're saying. But in any case, that's another one. And then, uh, you know, the, the, if NATO and the West succeed in starting World War III, that's another thing. But the one thing that I think a lot of people are not watching and, and understanding is that the, the, the mid-sized banks are, are still in very much trouble. And there will be another uh, one that, that fails. And that may be the, you know, the, the, the shoe that drops that gets everybody uh, down. But um, the, the other thing I just kind of joked about on this is, you know, maybe the AIs take over the trading desk and simply destroy our markets. I'm, I'm just joking around with that. But in any case, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what's going to cause it, but there is, uh, 
there, there's going to be a reality check for the complacency complacency that I'm seeing in the markets. And, uh, you know, it, this is uh, the exact opposite of what the Fed wants. And, you know, it, it's that the Fed is tightening and they want the markets down. So um, there's our intro on it. So let's go to our charts. And uh, the bulls here, you can see that they got through this uh this little channel right here, but now they're starting to come back down and they ran right into the resistance zone. So it, it made sense. We have the bearish divergences very overbought right there. And if they can pull back in, then what this is suggesting is the 4088 is going to be the next uh, move down. So that's the weekly chart. Not a whole lot has really changed on that. When we take a look at the fractal uh, chart on the daily, this is what I've been showing you where we're here. We had bearish divergences. It, now, fractal patterns are not going to follow everything uh, exactly. They're, they're, they mimic. So this is where I, I started looking at this fractal pattern. This is probably where I believe we are right here, uh, where the red you know, circle is. We, we have some bearish divergences. We had more defined bearish divergences here where it really looked like this. But in any case, they're, they're still there. Um, we, we broke out of this reverse symmetrical triangle, but that's allowed sometimes and typically that happens with blow off tops and then we, we come back down. So if this is the case, then we're looking at a move coming down somewhere down to the 3950 level. So um, the if we need to head higher where, you know, if, if the bulls need more, we're, we're looking at uh, 4560, 4595 and then 4620 as the resistance zones. But I, I mean, maybe they do it. I, I don't know. I'm not really. I'm not really understanding things, but th this fractal pattern does look like uh, it, it is in play. Um, let's take a look at the time sequence. So this is the red. This is what I, I put this out when when we were right around here. Um, you can see this is the week that it, it is supposed to top. So we'll see. Uh, I'm not. They, they don't always fo follow each other, but this would be the week that it does it. And uh, taking a look at the 60 minute chart here. Uh, we, we had bearish divergences in place. The bulls fixed it again with that big uh, move. So this kind of looks like we're just looking at a, a little consolidation. But really, the, the bears, until they get it through this 4,500 support, the bulls are going to continue to buy. If they get through it, then we're going to look at a quick move down to the 4,458. Uh, and really, the important support zone is going to be the 4,458, 4,380. Until the, the, the bears get through that, where, you know, it, the bulls are going to continue to buy it. But if we get down to these levels, this would be one of the largest drops we've had since this rally started. So um, this is the 60 minute chart. Like I said, uh, the the uh, the RSI it, 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 that we don't have the divergence here. But hang on one second. OK, so if, if we this is my normal charts here and if we look, this is the price oscillator and this is what I use. I, and you can see we do have a defined bearish divergence on that. So and even when we look at the daily chart on this, um, it, it's really the same thing. It's a it's a more defined uh, a bearish divergence. And, and this is it. So um, getting back to it. Let, let's just kind of wrap things up here. And like I said, hopefully the. Uh, we are going to have the, uh, the the PDF will be able to come out. So in summary, the timepiece of the chart, it's saying that we're going to reach some kind of top this week. Um, it, like I said, I, I would not, uh, it, it's not something that's 100% reliable, but it is used a lot by uh, money managers and uh, in, 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 in hedge funds and stuff like that. Uh, there's sell signals on uh, the, the indices, the indexes that are uh, breaking apart from each other with the NASDAQ uh, now lagging and the Dow now taking control. Uh, and there, there's, you know, it, it's just a sign that this end is near unless they fix it. But I mean, how much more can they fix it? Because um, the, the higher they bring these, you know, these levels, uh, it, the valuations are really going to go to all time highs. And, and that's that's not bullish. Uh you know, you don't want you don't want to see the valuation of the stock market at, uh, you know, I'm not the, you know, the, the valuation, meaning that like it's at 28. I, I think the high was 20, 27. But that was when we were at the all time highs also. Um, so with stocks lagging right now and, you know, only a select few that are leading this way, uh, it, it's it's something that we really have to just keep an eye on because it, it reality is going to step in at, at one of these uh, 
at one of these points here. So um, with that, it, it, let's just see what plays out for, for the rest of the, uh, the day here. Um, I, I have to run out to a meeting, so there is a chance I may not get the report, uh, the, the video report out tomorrow, uh, tonight, but I will let you know uh, one way or another, and hopefully I can. But with that, uh, hopefully this PDF works, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.